Hey everyone, Christy here for Spectrum Noir, and today I'm excited to share these metallic markers with you. So this is what it looks like when you just color straight on with these markers. I'm just using a Colorista pad, so you can see that it's nice and shiny, all kinds of beautiful. But for this video, I actually decided to get a little crazy, and I decided to watercolor with them. So I'm going to speed it up here, and you can just see that I grabbed um, two different pages from a Colorista pad. It's just a floral bouquet pad. And now real quick, I'm just going to show you what I am doing. So I am treating these the same way I would treat my Spectrum Aquas. The aqua markers are the watercolor markers if you're not familiar with them and they're fantastic. So with this, I decided to do the same thing. I kind of, I just wanted to show you there that um, you can kind of dab it off if you make a mistake. There's all different ways you can do this. You can color direct onto the paper or you can do what I'm doing um, and I'm using the acrylic black kind of as my palette. So I'm just scribbling. Right now I'm using the green citrine on there and I just scribbled and then I just grabbed my water brush and I'm just kind of gently adding color. And then I'm going back in, adding a little more color. And there's a few times that I even color direct with the marker on the paper, and then I kind of blend it out with my water brush. So for this, what I would recommend is um, keeping a paper towel handy. You can see that I am frequently going and kind of cleaning off my water brush. Um, sometimes I just kind of felt like I either got too much color on it or too much water and I do that frequently when I do any type of water coloring. So I, like I said, I just treated this exactly the way that I would treat watercolors. So for this particular um, background, I'm only going around the outside because I knew that this was going to kind of be my, my background image that I was going to have a base and then I'd have this panel and then I'd have a smaller panel in front of it with all the flowers that I actually would add more color to. So these are just the leaves and I'm just using that one green color. Um, I scribbled a little more on there because surprisingly you do end up using quite a bit um, of the ink. So and, and I went back around and I added a little bit more green. I kind of felt like it wasn't vibrant enough. So now I'm starting in with the flowers. That's from the same floral bouquet pad. Um, and I'm just using um, a couple different, I'll use a couple different colors for this. Um, I have pink quartz, amethyst, blue topaz, and gold plate. And then I'm going to use that same green citrine that I used previously um, for some of the little leaves and stuff that show up on here. So when you use the markers just straight onto um, a regular piece of cardstock, they show up the best on black. You can use that on any color. Um, dark colors are kind of recommended, but obviously you can do whatever you want. Uh, you just, the more dark the paper is the more vibrant they are. Now by watercoloring this does make them a little bit softer but you can see as it's drying um, it's a little bit it's like they kind of become a little more vivid. So when I first kind of laid the color down um, they were just kind of dull but as it dried it got darker and you can see there I went in directly with the marker and then I kind of blended it out. And that just gives a nice pop. It's a great way to like highlight something, um, even to probably create like a shadow. It's kind of like that nice outline. Since these Colorista pads come pre-printed, you don't have to worry about the stamping or anything. These are essentially what would be uh, equivalent to like heat embossing. So you can't always see that image really well. So when you add those highlights in, the image really starts popping out. So I'm just going around. Basically, what I decided to do was use all of the same color throughout the entire panel and then come back in with the other colors. I thought that would just kind of be the easiest way to show it. And you can see there, I went ahead and I added that the pink in, um, that's a pink quartz, and I didn't even have to blend it. It was still reacting enough. The uh, coloring that I did with the water brush was wet enough. So when I went in with that pink quartz, it reacted and it just kind of blended on its own. So even though these aren't technically watercolor markers, they still work just as well. They still blend just as well. And these Colorista pads are not watercolor paper, but I had absolutely no problem um, with buckling or anything like that. Now, I used a water brush instead of a regular paint brush to kind of control my water because I, I knew I didn't want too much because this wasn't watercolor paper. But like I said, I had absolutely no issues. So that's the blue topaz that I'm using and I'm using the exact same technique that I did with the pink. Go in, kind of lay down um, like a base color, add another layer over it, blend it together, and then come in with the actual marker where I felt it needed it to add that kind of like pop of color. Um, it just, I love the effect this gives. It's kind of like something's 
kind of like coming out of the shadows, not in a creepy way, in a really pretty way, because <laughs> they're flowers. So here's, now I'm just going to do the leaves, and I'm doing the exact same thing I did with the leaves on the outside. Um, off camera, I did do some of the centers. I just used the gold plate marker, but there wasn't really much to show for it. So, um, but same technique over and over again. Um, I'll hit it with a heat gun to dry it off, but in reality, this dried really, really quickly, um, even faster than normal watercolors seem to, so I'm guessing it's just the, the way the paper was. Um, but there's all kinds of different Colorista dark pads out there, um, so don't think that you have to stick with flowers. There's multiple designs, and I like to point out too that these were great with the metallic pencils. You can combine the markers and the pencils. So you can see the difference there between the two. Um, and now I'm just going to go ahead and finish assembling my card. I'm using some foam squares for um, both layers, the, the back layer and the top layer. And then for my sentiment, I'm just going to use um, this adorable, adorable Celebrate stamp. And I'm stamping it on vellum. So I'm just using some watermark ink. I'm going to stamp it on there, and then I'm just going to heat emboss it. Um, I decided to use the uh, like a platinum color embossing powder. I just kind of felt like it would pop out a little bit more. I wanted to make sure that, one, it didn't get lost with all those beautiful flowers, and two, that it didn't take away from all of my coloring that I did. So I folded it on the back and adhered it. Just That's just a nice little trick. Um, sometimes vellum the uh, adhesive shows through. So if you can wrap it around the back or hide your adhesive any which way, go for it. And then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm gonna place it on some Shimmering Pearl black cardstock. And that is it, it is really easy. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to follow us all over the place. We are online. So check us out at spectralnoir.com. Have a great day.